that, and it kind of links to, to what you've just said there. It was a really, really kind introduction. Um, but still, um, despite that, I'm here on the show and I've got this imposter syndrome. And I think when anyone gets asked to share something that's beyond um, their own familiar classroom context, that kicks in. Um, and in this example, I'm very fortunate to have people like Mark, like Ollie, who have pushed me um, to share wider. And I guess my first challenge to people is that, that I'd like to, to say the same to you, that it is worth taking that risk. Um, even if you feel it's something that other people are already talking about, what you have to say is valid because it gives us an idea of what's happening in different contexts. And the more we can see what works in as many different contexts as possible, the more we can learn and improve together. Um, the second thing is thinking about what we spend our time on. And I wanna to talk today about growing a team um, and thinking about capacity and workload, particularly in an online context, because that's what we're dealing with now. But I also wanna talk about it because it's important at any point in time. And I wanna to look to the future um, and devote my time into thinking about things that will improve things over a longer period of time. So um, my, my kind of key thought process and what I'd like to try and make explicit today is how I think about capacity and workload in my team, share a couple of ideas, but really then um, kick the conversation forward on going from this to think about how we can actually do this specifically. And so the way I like to think about capacity um, is this is a nice little rectangle there. Um, and everyone has a capacity in order to do work and their workload takes up a certain amount of their capacity. And over time that changes, it might go up, it might go down, depending on whether they've had a bad day, depending on external factors that we probably can't influence as leaders. Um, and so over time, I think it's really important to get to know your team because everyone is gonna have a slightly different capacity. And that might be to do with the fact that they are more experienced, they might be a certain phase of life, whether they've got young children, particularly for our context, working out in the Middle East, that support network that they might have had when they were back in their home country might not be there. And so we need to have a good understanding of what our team's capacity is. And then what we can do is kind of have a rough gauge for what our overall team capacity is. And that will help us then to plan ahead. So if I think about my team capacity over time, and let's just go up to January. So that I've got everyone across up to this certain capacity. And I know that when we start school in September, generally our workload is so high. There's very little space left to do anything. Whereas in October, in theory, hopefully, people start to get used to the routines, people are back into the swing of things and our workload drops. That frees us up to do things. Now, November, it might go straight back up again. Um, for us here in Oman, we're hoping to open um, to our students for the first time on the 1st of November. So again, there's a lot of challenges there, but um, hopefully a lot of improvements to what we can offer, but that will have an impact on our capacity as a team in order to develop and to grow. And then maybe idealistically, but I'm hoping that over time that our team workload will drop as we get used to the new routines and as we grow. And the reason I think it's important to consider these things beforehand is that then we can kind of map out what we're gonna do with our team. Do we need to support or do we need to challenge them? And so I find this sort of grid quite helpful where we think about giving high challenge, really pushing people to grow or giving high support and what ratio do we need? And so for example, in September, when we start and the workload is super high, I reckon we're probably around this part of the grid, really high support for our team. We need to be there, ready to give them what they need. And that also means we don't need to be challenging them with loads of extra initiatives or things um, to push them to grow. Right now, they just need our support. But over time, that will change. When we get to October, hopefully by then, we can start to slowly decrease the amount of support that people need and up the challenge. We can push them to grow a bit further, to develop their craft. November, remember I was, I'm predicting probably the workload is gonna go up again. Um, so I think it's probably time then to dial down the challenge. That's not the time when we start um, blended learning in, in our context to introduce any new initiatives. But we have been in school for quite a while. Um, so potentially 
the support doesn't necessarily need to increase overall. And then we get to December, and I think, right, the workflow is going down, we can move up the challenge. And then the wonderful place where we all want to be, maybe slightly idealistically, where there's a lot of spare capacity for us to grow as a team and therefore for us as leaders to challenge our team. And you'll notice the distribution um, of where these, these months are predicted to be, even with me being idealistic, we're generally around here. But occasionally we get up there and that's where we have the most growth, but we're never down in the bottom left-hand corner. There's never really a time where we're offering low challenge and low support because that's when teams start to stagnate. And so if I try and map this again a bit further to what happens to my team over time, is that over time they will grow, but not very much, particularly when they are at a really high capacity. But hopefully when there is more capacity for growth, when I challenge them more as a team, the overall team will grow. Sometimes they won't, sometimes probably they can go backwards, but over time, we're hoping there's gonna be this overall upward trend. And if we've planned a little bit in terms of when we push and when we just kind of hold and support, then we're gonna be able to use our time together more effectively. Now, obviously this is kind of me averaging out my team's capacity, thinking about what's going on at certain times. Um, and that's not the full story because we need to then individual monitor individuals within that team. So I might think at this point here, I'm about to start a period of growth. I'm about to up the challenge, lower the support because I feel like there's space left for people. But actually for someone else in my team, it changes. And so their route needs to be different. Whatever happens that has increased that workload for them means that you need to stop challenging them and you just need to offer support. But then over time, you need to slowly encourage them to grow and bit by bit, get them back on the same side, get them back together with the team. So as a team, we develop together. If I think about um, it might happen a little bit halfway through. So in this stage of growth, everyone was fine until halfway through, suddenly someone became overloaded. And so then to be fair, they're probably gonna go backwards but then you need to come in again with the support and slowly try and encourage them to get back to where they need to within that team. And it might take time. At the moment, they're still not where the team is, but they're heading towards an upper trajectory and we need to be patient and we need to make sure that we don't give up on people and we keep pushing them until eventually they're back to where they need to be. And in my experience, I think the majority of the time it's about helping our, our team make good decisions about what to prioritize. And hopefully one of the things that we're, I'd like to kind of kick on after this presentation is thinking about what are the real practical strategies we can do when we identify that we're in a certain context. There's also the other end of um, the spectrum where someone who is super on it, totally engaged, very efficient, and their workload is right down low, they've got loads of capacity, and their kind of productivity and their growth skyrockets. But we have a responsibility there as leaders as well, because teachers are very, very well-meaning. They're really invested in their profession, but that often means that their workload shoots up straight up and they don't even realize it. And that level of growth is not sustainable. And so then it's our job to come in and to kind of temper what they're doing, to kind of support them in a different way so that they are going at a more reasonable pace because this is a long-term career. We don't want teachers who are super productive for one to two years and then have to leave the profession because of burnout. So again, we need to do that and then eventually herd them all back in to growing together as a team. And so how do we actually do that? Because actually the key thing is all very well having this thought model but I need to know what my capacity is of my team. I need to be able to monitor their workload. And it comes down to time. You need to spend time listening. Um, and people have talked about this earlier on today about the importance of being an active listener. And I just really wanna echo that. Our job is to listen to people. Our job is to see what they're doing. We don't need to offer our opinion. We just need to hear what's going on. 
And I think actually this is probably one of the weaknesses of mine as a leader. When I think about what I get back from my team in terms of my 360 review that I asked them to do, I'm quite good at making decisions and being proactive and thinking about managing change, but maybe not necessarily the best listener. And that's something that I'm working on. Um, and so I've just spent the last week spending time having formal one-to-ones with my team on Google Meet because we're still online. And every single one of them has gone for the full hour. There was no agenda and it was just a really nice time to catch up and to listen to what they're getting on with. And I th don't think we make enough time to do that. Obviously time is precious, but I think it's really worth it. Another thing that I, I, was, I was trying to do last year, um, obviously if you're in a leadership role, you get a few more frees. I know you have other jobs to do, but one of my things that I would look to do just before we went offline, so I never got around to doing it, um, was matching up my frees with my team. So seeing where there was a shared free, because that meant that I could deliberately go in and just say hello to people when they've got a little bit of downtime. And if they're super busy, then leave them to it. But quite often they might just want a bit of a chat. And it's by having those regular interactions with people, by listening to them, giving them time, that you'll get a really good idea of where they're at on that capacity workload spectrum. Um, and so a couple of practical suggestions for how, how you might manage growth in your team is you've got to pick the time. So when we're about to start a period of growth, that's when you want to use your meeting time really well. That's when you need meetings. You want people there together in the same room on the same page to push forward. But once you're in it, once you're working through something, you don't necessarily need to have those ongoing live meetings. That's where technology comes in really useful. Having things like Google chat rooms um, and threads and teams or whatever interface you use um, can be really helpful because then the progression of what's happening, that discussion can be held online. People can dip in and out of it depending on where they're at with their workload and it can be there for future reference. So we can make sure that it kind of the conversation carries on long term and so just a couple of examples of what we've been doing in science over the last couple of years we've had great discussions about our key stage three curriculum and we spent weeks kind of talking about it um, and even though we're all online at the moment and we're all working from home we were able to go through and talk about all these different things um, and i'll just kind of flick through we talked about tech tools when people are trying things out people are sharing stuff about edpuzzle um, and that meant people, if they felt like they had a bit of spare capacity, they could go in, engage with that thread and develop it. Equally, um, if they were really busy, they didn't have to. They could stay out of it and just focus on, uh, on what they needed to. One warning though, and I guess another example of, of, of where there's areas for growth in, in, my, in my leadership as well, as I thought that at a certain point last year that we were here, we were about ready to start kicking off. And we had our meeting, we were talking about what, how we were going to develop this part of our online teaching. I started putting loads of Google chat threads in. I got really excited and enthusiastic, um, but I misread my team. And we were actually much higher up in terms of our workload. And that meant actually our progress went right back down. And that happens. And then we need to respond to that. So we had to dial it back down um, and then kind of rebuild. And so it's just kind of sharing the fact that if we're not on top of monitoring our team and understanding where they are, then the growth isn't going to happen. But we all make mistakes. And if we do get it wrong, the important thing is that we come back, we talk to our team, we go back to listening to them so that we can start going back on that upward trend again. And I think even longer term, what we actually want to be doing is actually increasing all of our team members' capacity because that means the overall capacity of our team will get higher and then we can do even more um, for our students. Now, if you've got a really good kind of school PD system, that's gonna happen automatically. If in your team you're spending time, when there is time developing them, that's gonna happen automatically. But I think that's something worth having a further conversation about maybe another time. And finally, I just wanted to kind of zoom out again and talk about the bigger picture because we're not just one person, in my case, a head of department on our own. And I've been talking about the fact we need to be growing our team, we need to be monitoring their workload and their capacity, but they also have a responsibility to communicate with you. That process is two ways and we need to encourage that. 
and we'll also be part of a team where we will be part of some sort of middle leadership team and there'll be a senior leadership team above us and again the um the communication needs to be two ways and so the more that we can listen to our team and the more that we can make sure that other people are listening to us the more we can identify when do we need to push and challenge people to grow or when do we need to support so i'd be really interested in um kind of carrying on this conversation um particularly talking about real um, specific concrete ways of monitoring workload and capacity and how we develop things and how we support people. And then when the time is right, how we challenge people. Um, obviously, keep using that Learn Live UA um, hashtag to talk about it. If you want to talk about it more on Twitter, I'm on M. Clark Science. Um, but thank you very much for watching and hopefully we'll, we'll talk soon. So thank you very much. <laughs>